Welcome back! Today we're diving deeper into TicTic, one of the most robust organization tools out there. I've been using TicTic for months now, and it's an amazing task manager if you're all about simplicity. However, although it seems simple, TicTic is actually packed with well-hidden features. So today we're exploring some not-so-obvious tools and shortcuts that many users overlook. So let's get started! Many people know you can import your Google Calendar to TicTic, but did you know you can actually import your TicTic tasks to Google Calendar as well? So first of all, to import your GCal into TicTic, under Settings, click Calendars, click on the plus button to add your calendar, select Google, and then you just have to follow the instructions on the screen. Now the trick is to log in to TicTic on your browser, and this will not work either on your mobile or desktop app. Go to Settings and click Calendar and Mail. Enable Subscribe TicTic in your Calendar app and copy the provided URL. Then in Google Calendar, go to your calendar list and click the plus button in your calendar tab to add a new calendar. Select the option to add a calendar from URL and go to the next settings page. Enable TicTic's provided URL and that's it. You'll now see your TicTic tasks in Google Calendar. This is also one of my favorite ones. While there is a next 7 days smart list you can toggle in TicTic settings, that will show you everything due that week. Personally, I like to see my main weekly goals, basically a list with 3 to 5 main items I want to get done by the end of the week. You can create a tag named weekly and tag the appropriate items with it and just then click the tag when you want to see your weekly goals. Or you can create a new task in your today view, pin it to the top of your list and just call it weekly goals and then use the task description to add your major milestones. This is actually how I prefer to do it, although I know it's a weird workaround. A lot of people don't know that you can actually see all the lists inside a TicTic list in a Kanban board format, so if you're coming from Trello, this may be a feature that you miss and you'll love seeing it here. To enable the Kanban board in TicTic, click any list in your navigation pane, search for the three dots on the upper right corner and select Kanban view. Some tasks are incredibly repetitive and follow the same workflow. For instance, if you want to create an Instagram post, your workflow may be something like brainstorm idea, take picture, edit picture, add final touches, write caption, research and add tags, and schedule or publish post. You can add all those steps to a pre-made TicTic template. You can then import the template when you're creating a new task, and in the add task bar, click the down arrow and select add from template and you're good to go. To create a task via email, log into the web version of TicTic, click Avatar, Settings, Calendar and Mail, and then find Add Tasks via email. Then, if you forward an email to this special generated email address, that will be automatically added to your TicTic list, so you'll never miss replying or following up on someone. If you access your Today List in the mobile app, you'll notice this particular list has an icon on the top, and that's called the Plan Your Day feature, and it basically allows you to see all of today's tasks in card format, with all subtasks in detail, and decide what you want to do with each task. Overall, while this feature doesn't offer anything that you couldn't do in the regular list view, it forces you to face and deal with each task separately, which can be incredibly useful for a lot of people who tend to skim through tasks. By default, when you assign a date to a task, you'll see the due date of that task near the task name. However, for particularly challenging or complex projects, and I usually recommend this view for people managing projects with a lot of dependencies, you can toggle countdown mode. On mobile, go to settings, select date and time, and enable countdown mode. Then, when you return to your list, a simple tap on the display date will switch the view and show you how many days are left or how many days are overdue. TicTic provides you with a full Pomodoro timer that you can actually assign to specific tasks. When you're doing time estimation, it can be incredibly useful to see side by side how much time you estimated versus how much time you actually spent tackling a certain task. So go to the task detail page and fold the three dots and select Start Focus Estimation. You can then set beforehand an estimated POMO number that you intend to get for this task or an estimated duration you'll spend doing it before the timer starts. 
You can use Markdown when you want to write a task description or a note. If you have experience using Markdown before, for instance, Notion supports it as well, the same kind of rules apply. This means you can format your tic-tic tasks and notes with headings, italic, bold, underline, strike through, highlighting, etc. To get a summary of tasks you've completed today, you can create a note and then click the clipboard icon. You'll see a preview of your task summary. Go to filter to choose what it includes and then go to insert to add it to the notes. On the mobile app, you can go into a task and then press and hold on the date and time row to set a progress bar to completion percentage of that task. It is a handy way I use daily to track progress of various tasks for the day. My workflow always means organizing complex business-related projects in Notion and then importing all tasks and deadlines to tick tick to manage them in my calendar. And if there is one thing I'd like to have done before I started doing this whole online business thing is actually reading about building a business instead of just thinking I had a hobby that was generating income every single month. I eventually came across a really useful book called The $100 Startup and you can use short form to get all the knowledge you need from this book without having to read it from start to finish. With short form, you can learn the ideas from all the non-fiction books you've ever wanted to read and you get really detailed summaries on so many books. And if you're thinking, well, I can find a lot of free summaries on the internet, this is where it gets interesting, because instead of just summarizing the books, short form actually goes beyond that and it adds interactive exercises to help you apply the ideas you've just learned, as well as smart insights, allowing you to connect the dots and understand everything at a deeper level. You can use short form to learn all the key points from this book, but you can also access their whole library of productivity, history, psychology and philosophy books as well. When I use short form, I look forward to the full experience and I end up buying the full book if I enjoy the summary. However, I'm always able to go back to short form to at least remember the main key points. Short form also drops new book guides and articles every week and subscribers get to vote on what books to cover. To get a 5 days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription, join short form through my special link or click the link in the description box below. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!